Hello, this is Melissa Cole, curator of the Oshawa Community Museum. I would like to thank you for joining me today for our monthly podcast. This month's podcast features goffering and fluting irons. If you have ever pressed clothes with an iron on a flat surface, you know how easy it is to create a crease. So how did one create fancy ruffles and keep the flounces without them going flat during the 19th century and earlier? There's a name for that, and it is called goffering, which was the process of creating frills so that they were evenly and finely gathered. Many devices were designed to deal with the process of keeping cuffs, collars, and ruffles nicely goffered and crimped. Many resembled corrugated boards. Goffering irons were developed to press pleats, ruffles, and ridges into fabric. They have been used since the 16th century on everything from Elizabethan ruffs to Victorian ruffles. Goffering was primarily done after the article of clothing was laundered. In this French illustration from 1876, women are gathered around a table of freshly laundered clothing, and they are adding back the frills and ruffles that came out in the wash. You will notice the woman dressed in yellow is holding what appears to be a goffering iron rod. The task of crimping or goffering Victorian clothes was made easier by the fact that collars, cuffs, and ruffles were detachable. This was done so that they could be washed more regularly than the large and heavy items of clothing to which they were attached. Once washed, these items needed gathering and goffering before being sewn or attached back onto the garments. Another iron that is similar to the goffering iron was fluting irons. They were also known as crimping irons and they were invented during a decade when ruffled trimmings were more in fashion than ever. See this advertisement from the 1870s? Many of the ruffles pictured here may have been tackled with a goffering iron or might have been pressed flat by busy home launderers. Fluting irons were an invention that saw their heyday in North America from the 1860s through to the 1880s. Let's take a look at a couple of different styles that are found in the collection of the Oshawa Community Museum. This particular iron, sometimes called an Italian iron or a tally iron, resembles a metal test tube set horizontally on a stand. The tube was heated by inserting a metal poker-like rod fresh from stove or hearth. The frilled cuffs and collars would be curled around the cylinder and other trimmings like ribbons were, re were moved across it. Some Victorians took pride in a display of expertly ironed ruffles and the well-dressed baby often had a bonnet trimmed with Italian ironed double frills. By the mid-19th century, a wide variety of fluting irons or crimping machines were in use. This style of fluting iron was an improvement over the earlier method of pressing pleats into fabric, which involved wrapping each individual crease by hand around the gophering iron, as seen with the previous style of iron. Our model here is the Eagle Fluter. The machine is made of iron with brass rollers and a wooden handle. It is 12 centimeters in height. Here is a description of how the device works that's taken from a patent of Mrs. Susan R. Knox titled Improvement in Fluting Machines number 59,913 from 1886. It operates by means of a hand crank which rotates a pair of corrugated rollers, between which the fabric is drawn by the rotation of the rollers, creating a fluting effect, as well as a simultaneous rotation of the rollers in opposite directions, being caused by the intermeshing of the corrugations of one roller with the corresponding grooves of the other. These rollers are made hollow in order to heat them by the introduction of heating irons or otherwise and thus render the fabric more susceptible to the fluting action of the rollers. This particular machine was patented on November 2nd, 1872. On the bottom of the machine it is embossed American Machine Company, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. These machine fluters are also referred to as pleaters or pleating irons, crimpers, crimping irons, and, ru and rufflers. They came in a myriad of designs. Some have a pedestal or a tripod base. Some were clamp-on models, with each style having a rare and valuable variation or two amongst them. A third style of fluting iron found in our collection is the rocker-style fluter. This particular machine is the Erie 
piece fluting iron made by the Griswold Manufacturing Company of Erie, Pennsylvania. They produce some of the finest quality cast iron housewares of any manufacturer of its day. They were best known for their cast iron cookware, and they produced a wide variety of other cast iron kitchenware and other household necessities, including irons, trivets, and this three-piece fluting iron. This fluter was available in two different finishes, a nickel-plated version and this one, the model with the iron finish. The, fluting, the Erie Fluting Iron is an example of a rocker fluter. It is 11 centimeters in height and 14 centimeters in width. This is the most commonly found design of all fluting irons. With this rocker style of fluting iron, the ironer would manu manually rock the top half of the iron over the bottom half with the fabric in between. After researching this podcast, I thought about how one cares for their clothing today. And I thought ironing a simple shirt that contained little to no ruffles at all was a bit tedious. Thankfully, fluting irons are now obsolete.